Okay, troops, today we're talking about heat energy and temperature change. Do all metals require the same amount of heat energy to heat them up for their temperature to rise by the same amount? Or are they different? There's brass, copper, iron and aluminium. And just to check, let's measure the mass of them. They should all be one kilogram, but better check. There we go. And the mass is 1,000 grams, 1 kilogram. So we're going to heat up each block. We're going to put a heater in the block and a thermometer. And the heater is going to be connected to a power supply. And we're also going to connect a joule meter, an energy meter that measures the amount of energy in joules that's been supplied to the heater. Now we're going to set it so that each click on this meter is equal to 10 joules. So each digit, each unit is 10 joules. Now, there's the thermometer and the heater inside the aluminium block. And just now it's reading about mm, 24 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it on for a minute or so, just so that the block and the thermometer and the heater have all warmed up. In fact, we're going to wait until we're 30 degrees. So, back in a tick. Here we go then. So, we're now at 30 degrees. Uh, so, the metal's at 30, the heater's at 30, the thermometer's at 30. Let's reset the energy meter. And then we will measure how much energy is required to heat it up to 35 degrees. So, We'll be back in a sec. We're back. So how much heat energy was required for that 5 degree rise in temperature? Well, here it is. That's 5,070 joules. Remember, each unit's 10 joules. So 5,070. Let's do some maths. Right. It takes a specific amount of heat energy to heat one kilogram of a substance by one degree C. Now that specific amount of heat energy is called the specific heat capacity of the substance. It's got a symbol C. Now we're going to work it out for aluminium. One kilogram of aluminium, we're going to heat it up by five degrees and we supplied it with 5,070 joules. We can write all that in shorthand. M for mass, now, triangle T, we actually call it delta T, stands for change in temperature. Delta is the Greek letter, which means change in. So delta T was 5 degrees C, and our heat energy was 5,070 joules. That's what was required to heat our 1 kilogram by 5 degrees. So, what was the energy required to heat 1 kilogram by 1 degree? Well, we would divide that 5,070 by 5 and we get 1,014 joules per kilogram per degree C. What that unit means is it takes that amount of energy, that amount of joules, to heat 1 kilogram by 1 degree. Now, the quoted value for aluminium is 902 joules for every kilogram for every degree C. So, we're not bad, but we're a wee bit high. Now, all the values that you need for specific heat capacities are on your data sheet. You'll always have them in an exam. Why was our value too high? Well, heat was lost to the surroundings. It was escaping out the sides of the metal block. What we should have done, really, was insulate the metal block to stop any heat loss. Now, the same experiment was repeated with copper. And with the iron, and with the brass, and here's the results we got. Okay, we did other metals. We did the uh, brass and copper and iron, and we've just done aluminium. They're all one kilogram. Now they're different sizes because they've got different densities. But here's our results for copper. 450 joules to heat 1 kilogram by 1 degree, 540 for iron, 1048 for brass. 
Now if we look up those values on our data table, our data sheet at the front of any exam paper, there's the actual values. Now we've got them in the right order, but why are our values too high? Again, it's down to the fact that these blocks weren't insulated and heat is always lost to the surroundings. The only way to reduce that is to insulate them. Now, it's not only metals we're going to look at. You might also be asked about the specific heat capacity of a liquid. For example, water. I've got 600 millilitres of water here. And we can do the same experiment. We can put a heater in and a thermometer and measure the amount of heat energy required to raise a mass of water up by a certain temperature change. Now, same as before, we're going to put the heater on for a, a wee minute just so that the heater and the water and the thermometer are all at the same temperature. So we shall wait until it's 25 degrees and then we will reset our heater again. So here we go. We're at 25. Let's reset the heater. And we are going to measure how much heat energy is required to raise the temperature of the water by 5 degrees. Now we should really be stirring the water as well, make sure the heat is distributed well throughout and now at 30 degrees, let's stop the heater. Remember each unit is 10 joules, so stop. That is 12,750. Let's do some maths. Right, here's the result for water. 600 millilitres of water that's 0 0.6 kilograms. Our temperature rise was 5 degrees again, and the heat energy was supplied 12,750 joules. So, what was the energy required to heat 1 kilogram by 1 degree? Well, we've got an equation to help us here, and it's on your relationship sheet. EH equals CM delta T. EH is the heat energy. M is the mass in kilograms and delta T is that change in temperature. We can rearrange this then for us to find C, the specific heat capacity for water. Now you can put this in a triangle, it's a bit clumsy but that's what it looks like. So C is EH over M delta T. Let's put all those figures in, 12,750, 0 0.6 kilograms and 5 degrees. That gives us 4250 joules per kilogram per degree C. And the actual quoted value for water on your data sheet is 4180 joules per kilogram per degree C. So we're not bad. Bingo. But again, our value is slightly high. Same as before. That's because we have lost energy, heat energy to the surroundings. That specific heat capacity.